this here is the uh, income statement for General Electric Inc. General Electric is actually a very diverse company. They started out with power generation applications and patents and have since moved on to everything from uh, jet engines to um, healthcare industry like uh, healthcare machines and healthcare data maintenance. This here is the net income, the income statement for General Electric. Um, as you can see, their net income actually increased to 13641 um, This increase, though, was not necessarily attributed to an increase in sales. It was actually an, uh, attributed to a very uh, much faster drop in total costs and expenses compared to a almost flat uh, revenue. This, along with no, dividend, no preferred stock dividend in 2012, actually led them to get an, a higher net income. If they had paid dividends, they perhaps would have had a, a lower net income. The general uh, electric balance sheet um, shows that the company in, in whole is actually contracting. Its um, total, as, total liabilities and equity actually decreased to 91.6%, as well as the assets, um, as you can see there in 2012. And this was actually, um, they actually had a total equity increase of 3.4% from 2010 numbers, and that was primarily due to retained earnings. Um, the total li uh, liabilities actually show a decline of 11.3%, which actually probably indicates that they're trying to pay a lot of their liabilities with, with their assets, okay? And this is the uh, comparative analysis between General Electric and its closest competitor, com competitor Royal Phillips. And as you can see here, the re research and development um, department of General Electric is actually twice as efficient than um, Royal Phillips with 3.1% compared to 7.3% of income going towards research and development. Um, this shows here that for every dollar that General Electric in invests in R&D, they're able to generate almost uh, $30, $30 in sales compared to Gener uh, Royal Phillips, which only gets about $12 for every dollar invested in research and development. And also, General Electric is much more efficient at creating a profit it is at 9.3% of every dollar that it sells, it generates a profit compared to the Royal Phillips, which is only at 0.9%. And they actually had a negative 5.7% decrease in 2011, mostly due to this uh, impairment loss through goodwill. You can also see that net income is, or I'm sorry, goodwill is actually over, almost 10 times as much, and that's probably due to the um, large patent, large subsidiary portfolio that General Electric has. That, um, those factors actually led to a market capitalization of $220 million for General Electric compared to $25 million for Royal Phillips, almost a, a 10 times bigger company than its competitor. So its analysis, uh, some of the things that I came up with for weaknesses were its oil and gas division. In terms of uh, its number of sales or sa percentage of sales, it's a lot lower than it should be. Um, its over -diversification, diversification can both be a weakness and a strength. Um, oh, a, a large uh, subsidiary portfolio, a large patent portfolio can actually be very hard to manage um, many divisions, but it's also a good thing because you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. It also has a very strong subsidiary portfolio, which allows it to cut down on costs when, it's, when um, uh, giving work out to third parties. Some of the threats are data security, uh, data security breaches, and um, drought. Opportunities are regional jet engines in the housing market. So some of the strategies I came up with to deal with these were uh, invest in, develop, in developing cleaner frac fracking technologies, and that would primarily take care of drought uh, by developing a, a fluid um, that would uh, s replace water. They would able to alleviate drought conditions um, and also uh, reestablish a good footprint in their oil and gas division. Um, in 2007, they actually exited the U.S. housing market. If they looked in, and if they looked into re-entering the housing market, they'd able to they'd be able to take an opportunity of the recovery, um, as well as not over diversify because they already have uh, it, uh, segments in other foreign countries. So they, if they applied those division the techniques they use in those divisions here, they'd have they'd still have the same division, but they'd be able to re-enter the market. <clears throat> uh, if they acquired a data security firm, it would help them establish a good control on uh, developing data security procedures that would help them safeguard all their machines and, and data management that they help, for example, in the healthcare industry, they help with um, managing data, patient data. 
um, which is very sensitive information. You want to have a good control on that. And that would help, and that would also help them uh, 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 solidify their patent, their subsidiary portfolio. They already have uh, an energy conservation department. So if they included water in those energy conservation procedures or, or uh, segment, they'd actually help out as well with the drought and it wouldn't actually over diversify them because they already have this department. They already have this top management for this segment. <clears throat> and finally, if they develop smaller jet engines for developing markets, they'd be able to take advantage of regional, jet, uh, regional flights. Right now they currently do jet engines for large commercial you know, very fuel efficient and very expensive jet engines for commercial airlines. They were able to develop smaller, maybe less costly jet engines to help them enter this market and also not, and also help with diversification in their patent portfolio. Finally, uh, or this is the board of directors. 7% um, 7 7 of them are actually insiders. Uh, only one of them actually is the, an insider, that's Jeffrey Himmel, and that's the CEO. He's the only one that came from within the internal ranks of the company. Uh, on average, they have seven years of experience in the board, in this board. Um, they're 71% male, 79% white, and they came mostly from private and elite universities and with a, with a business degree, 64%. And uh, the largest in, uh, division of these was 29% were had CEO, some sort of CEO experience. So in recap, uh, costs have fallen and as faster than income, so that resulted in a, in a net income, in a greater net income. The company is actually contracting, assets are down 8.4%, and the drop in assets appears to be attributed to a decline in 11.7% in liabilities with an increase of 3.4% in equity. GE is much more efficient at converting its R&D investment into sales, and um, the board is mostly dominated by white male um, from an outside company and graduated from a private Ivy League school. Um, it is my recommendation to management that uh, they look at reversing the trend of contraction of in, at, in the company by increasing sales of both goods and services, um, maybe increasing funding to R and D. The R and D department would help them generate more patents that would allow them to increase their sales. Um, board, uh, the board diversity should be increased by possibly looking at internal candidates that would help, um, that may, might want to go to an Ivy League or a, a public university, a very good public university if that's the case, or um, just look for internal candidates that have that drive to um, move up in the company. And that's it. Thank you.